You know the Bible was given to us as a gift from God. You know that? The writers of the Old Testament and the New Testament were led to write by the Holy Spirit. And the revelations given to them were given to them by God. And the Bible says no scripture is of any private interpretation. In other words, when any prophet in the Bible brought forth a revelation that was given to him from God, you had to check it with what other prophets had said. Because God will never contradict himself. If a prophet has said something, you have to be sure it is consistent with the character of God. Isaiah said, thus said the Lord, I make good and I create evil. That is Isaiah producing his own prophecy, telling you what thus said the Lord. But you listen to that word. And you see, a lot of times they spoke in shadows and types. Like Paul said, we see through a glass darkly. A lot of the things they said were shaded. If you want to know God, look at Jesus. You want to know what God is like, look at Jesus. Read his words and you will understand what God is like. Did you ever hear of our friend Job? Job was a wonderful man of God. And I'm not talking about human thinking, human standard. God testified of Job that he was an upright man, a righteous man. That's what God said about him. Job was a great man. His faith was tried. His faith was tested. And thank God, he was not found wanting. Amen? But there's something about the life of Job that has confused a lot of people. They say, but why did God do that to Job? Someone said, does God still do such things today? You know, when they go through some problems, they want to know maybe they are like Job. Maybe they are the Job of the 21st century. Maybe God's trying to play the same trick on them that he did on Job. They lost their job. Maybe even lost their children. They've gotten so sick and dying. All their friends have abandoned them. The spouse is gone. So they say, maybe this is from God. I might just be another Job. And then you remember the famous words of Job. Naked came out of my mother's womb. The Lord has given. <laughs> and the Lord has taken away. All right. Maybe for those of you who are not quite acquainted with what Job went through. May I just read to you very quickly what Job went through. The book of Job, chapter number one. From verse 1, there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and escaped evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. He had ten children. His substance also was seven thousand sheep and three thousand camels and five hundred yoke of oxen and five hundred she asses and a very great household so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. Did you hear that? The richest man in all the east in those days was an upright man. A man of God. man that loved God. Perfect in the things of God. So don't you think that the more you serve the devil, the richer you become. It's a lie. It's a lie of the devil. Somebody says, if you serve God, you might just become poor. You serve the devil, serve the devil first and get rich. And then later on, you can serve God. <laughs> the devil doesn't make people rich. Far from it. He lies to them. He says, but what about the rich people who don't serve God? I'll tell you who gave it to them. First, ask yourself, what about the poor people who don't serve God too? If the devil gave to those people, why doesn't he give to the other poor guys who don't serve God? Proof positive, it was not the devil that gave it to them. Had they get it then? They stumbled upon or acted rightly on principles in this world that God has already given. Brothers and sisters, whether you believe in God or you don't believe in God, if you will sow a seed of corn in the ground, it will sprout, it will grow. Because the law has been given there. Whether you believe in God or you don't believe in God, if you walk off of the balcony, you will drop down to the ground. Why? Because the law of gravity is in operation. Whether you believe in God or you don't believe in God. You're still there? There are principles of success laid out in this world. That if any man will take them and act upon them, 
he'll become successful. The only trouble is, the principles of this life are under a curse. Which means, if any man will rely on the principles of this life for success, he can only go up to come down. Why? Because it's all under a curse. Which means, it cannot give you permanent success. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. Now, it says the sons of God. If you study properly, you understand he was talking about angels. They had an angelic conference with Almighty God. So the term sons of God there doesn't mean sons of God in the, in the, um, in the saints of the New Testament. No, it refers to angels at this time. All right? Because you look at the Hebrew word used there, you'd know he's dealing with angelic beings. So he says, Satan came also among them. And the Lord, verse 7, and the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Where are you coming from? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Now, somebody says, You mean Satan came into the presence of Almighty God, and God didn't destroy him? Yes, the Bible says he did. So why didn't God destroy him? Because God could not. And he has told us that man is a spirit. It's his physical body that returns to dust. Because the creation of man and the formation of man are two different things. Man was created and man was formed. The inward man was created by God. But the outward man was formed from the dust of the ground. The outward man is the man that you see, that's sitting down, the one, the body, and his senses. But the inward man is the human spirit and his soul. You get it? How many of you have understood that? Can I see your hand up? All right. Now look at this. When Adam became a, a servant of the devil by yielding himself to the devil, Satan gained the authority over Adam. He gained Adamic authority. And with that Adamic authority, he became the God of this world. He became the God of this world. Are you hearing me? And that's why when Jesus came, Satan said, Now you can fall down and worship me and I'll give you everything. He said, look at all the kingdoms of this world. And the Bible says he showed them to Jesus in a moment of time. He said, if you will fall down and worship me, I'll give you all of this. Because they have been delivered into my hands. Now, if that had not been a bona fide temptation, Jesus would have never had to say it is written. Because Jesus would know, well, he's a lie. That's not true at all. But you see, it's been delivered into his hands. He actually stole them. He actually got them from Adam. So... He said, if you will fall down and worship me, I'll give you all of this. And Jesus wouldn't fall for that. Jesus said, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. Later on, we understand that Jesus defeated the devil. Amen. Oh, we can talk about that. But at this time in the Old Testament, Job, living in the Old Testament, you remember, I said, God called for this angelic conference, and Adam came, uh, uh, Satan came. How come Satan could present himself in the presence of God and not be kicked out? Because he came with Adamic authority. He didn't come with his fallen angelic authority. He had lost that, but he gained a higher authority than angels. Have you gotten it now? Because Adam's authority, even though he was in the earth, was higher than the angels. And so when Satan got that authority from Adam, he was able to come into the presence of God. Now he cannot do that again. Why? Because Jesus has defeated him. So he cannot go into the presence of God and begin to talk about you. He can accuse you from here, but he don't come to heaven. He's been kicked out, defeated. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. All right. Now, look at this. Verse 7. Job chapter 1. Are you still with me? Okay. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, 
a perfect and an upright man, one that feared God and escaped evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for nothing? Has not thou made an edge about him and about his house? An edge of protection. He said, does Job fear you for nothing? Haven't you built an edge around him and around his house? And about all that he had on every side? How did, how did Satan know he had been there? He had been there. He had tried to go take away from Job. He had tried to attack him. But he found out there was a hedge about Job. He tried to destroy his business. He found out the business was protected. He tried to destroy the house. The whole house was protected. And he was so frustrated until he found himself in the presence of God. And God said, have you found out about Job? And he said, yeah, the man serving you, of course, because you have... You protected everything he's got. You protected his life. You, 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 you've taken good care of the man. Look at it. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands. Look at look. Satan is talking. When a man is blessed, it's not the devil. Even Satan knows it's God who blesses. Look at it right there. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. Then he said, but put forth thine hand now and touch all that he had and he will curse thee to thy face. He said, you touch what is God and see what happens. Verse 11, Satan's still talking. He says, but put forth thine hand now and touch all that he had and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, behold, all that he had is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Now watch the works of Satan. I want you to watch. This is just something else. I want you to watch. Here is Job enjoying himself and his family. Everything is all right. And Satan comes on the scene. Now when Satan shows up in your house, look, verse 13. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabaeans fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Your servants are dead. While he was yet speaking, while this servant was speaking, because he was the only one who was able to escape. There came also another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven. And had burned up the sheep. You remember the number of sheep? We read about his oxen and so on. All right. He says, the fire of God is falling from heaven and had burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, the Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away and slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, this is the first one. There came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young men and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Listen, in one day, all of his business went down. His children died all at once in one day. I mean, when Satan can come in, there's no telling how far he would go. You cannot beg Satan. You don't say, please, please, I'm so far enough, please. No! Until you are dead, he's not satisfied. He will take your children. He will take your wife. He will get on your case. Wreck your business. Get on. Listen, don't, don't make friendship with the devil. He doesn't play cool. Then Job arose and tore his mantle. That's his overcoat. And shaved his head. He removed all his hair. He shaved his head completely. And fell down upon the ground. 
and worship. Oh God. <laughs> and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the good Lord had taken away. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. One of the most inspiring attitudes in God's eternal word. You are hearing some of the most challenging statements ever to come out of the lips of a man who suffered such crisis. The Bible says he fell down. He had shaved his head and he worshipped God. I mean, you read that and you, you, you just sit down and cry. A man like you. He didn't say, what is all this? What am I going to do? No. Am I the only one? He didn't say that. Think about it. How many of you have gone through this? You've gone through this kind of a thing in one day. How many of you? Has this happened to you? Paul says, why this man was still talking? The other guy arrived, waiting to give his own. As he was saying his own, the other man arrived. Until the last one came and said, even the children, all of them, all ten children are gone. Think about it. Don't you think she will go, she will lose her mind at this time? She's already old. How is she going to have children again? Ten. Ten of them. They are grown up enough to enjoy themselves in their eldest brother's house. So they're no longer children. They've grown up. The business is gone. All the children are dead in one day. Just one sweep. All gone. Look at verse 22. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. He wouldn't utter nonsense against God. Good attitude. He had the right attitude because he honored God in his life. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it because I have no at home address. And, and the Lord said... <laughs> and the Lord, verse 2, And the Lord said unto Satan... Well, no, 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 we're through with that. Verse 3, and the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and has killed evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity? Although thou movest, I want you to see that word and underline it. That picture of God was so faulty. Anything that happened was by God. If it was evil, it was God. If it was good, it was God. They said anything that comes is from God. Look at Job. Job was a priest. Look at the first few verses. You can read from verse 4 and discover that he was a priest. He was in charge of his family and for all his servants. He was a priest at the time. He offered sacrifices unto God. That's Job. Job knew God so much. I want you to get this. Job knew God so much. That nothing moved him. He had committed himself to Almighty God. It's like when you say, come what may, I will never deny my Lord. He was so committed. But you know something? How come Job didn't know it was Satan who destroyed his family?